Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and before we move on to tonight's story, I just wanted to let you know about two quick events, two things. I'm really freaking busy this July, so I don't want to miss any of you guys. On July 19th through the 21st, I'm going to be in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm going to be there for Hamacon, and it's actually like a really nice, like, chill convention. Like, everybody there is super friendly. It's got a really great atmosphere, so I really hope I can see you guys there. And there's a brand new convention that's opening up in Mesquite, Texas. July 27th and the 28th, the Texas Haunters Convention is going to be in Mesquite, Texas at the Hampton Inn and Suites. I'll include both these links in the description down below so you guys can kind of get the hang of it. But if you guys would like to come to either one of these places, they're going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be huge, scary, spooky, fun times all around. Also, you know, it'd be cool if I get a chance to meet some of you guys. That's it. On to tonight's story. I have trouble sleeping at night. Uh, no, I don't have insomnia or sleep apnea or any kind of sleeping disorder. You know, let's start from the beginning. I graduated from university a year ago with a degree in business administration. I found myself a decent apartment near my first job. The job paid fairly well, and so I was able to afford relatively nice furniture for my apartment. Despite all my brand new furniture and linens, after the first few weeks in my apartment, I started to feel small, ticklish sensations running up and down my legs in bed. Once I paid a bit more attention to them, I realized that they it must have been bed bugs. But I was disgusted, and so I decided to sleep on my couch and do some research on how to get rid of them in the morning. I read online that the best way to get rid of bed bugs is to clean all the sheets in your apartment and then scrub and vacuum the mattress and bed frame. When I got home from work, I spent hours going through each of these steps, making sure to do everything thoroughly to get rid of the insects. But thankfully, it seemed to work, as for the next month I had no insects scuttling along my body at night. However, as I was lying in bed about five weeks after I had scoured my bed clean, I felt something run across my hand. Stupid bugs, I muttered, as I angrily got out of bed and went off to the couch for the second time. In the morning, I called my pest control company, and they came and fumigated my bedroom. The bugs never stopped coming back. Over the better part of a year, I kept trying different things to get the bugs to leave for good. I called three different pest control companies, bought a new bed and linens, and even moved to a different apartment without bringing any of my old furniture with me. But no matter what I did... They always came back with time. As one might imagine, I've had nightmares involving these bugs. They were, they were nightmares where I'd wake up and I would be absolutely covered in bugs from head to toe. They were all different sizes and shapes and numbers of little legs. I was never able to move in any of these dreams, and the bugs, they would inevitably make their way into my eyes and mouth, with there being nothing I could do about it. There were other dreams where I'd be running through the jungle, trying to get away from other unknown creatures behind me. I would end up colliding with multiple spiderwebs and feeling huge tarantulas and other insects working their way up my legs and back as I ran. However, the most prevalent nightmare that I had was more... hellish. It would always start with me slowly waking up on a hard stone floor. I'd open my eyes and be met with a very large and cavernous space, lit by many small fires scattered across the cavern's rocky outcropping. Looking down, I saw my body, or what remained of it. My arms and legs were mostly eaten away, with just scraps of skin, tendon, and bone left of them. The rest of my body was heavily decomposed, with my chest torn open in several places. There were bugs crawling all over my ruined body. They ran up and down the bones of my legs and arms, and flowed freely in and out of the gaping wounds in my chest. Terrified, I would attempt to, to brush them away and get up and flee. However, however, my mutilated body was it always failed me. And after several minutes of struggle, I would resign myself to lying there against the rocky outcropping behind me. I always woke up right after I closed my eyes in defeat, and without fail, I would need to brush several bugs off of me when I awoke. However, everything, including these dreams started to change a few weeks ago. Over the past year during the periods where I had bug problems, 
I only ever felt two or three at a time. However, one recent night I woke up from one of my bug-induced nightmares and I felt... I felt dozens of bugs all over my body. I jumped out of bed attempting to brush them off my skin as quickly as I could. I turned on the light to see how bad the infestation had gotten and I froze. There wasn't a single bug in sight. Come to think of it, I'd never actually seen any of the bugs I'd been dealing with in the past. I hadn't come... Eh. It hadn't come to my attention before, because there... There was only a couple, and I assumed... They just crawled away once I turned on the light, but as I stood there that night, there was something about... About having so many bugs crawling over me, and then looking to see my bed completely free of vermin... That made me break out in a cold sweat that I hadn't felt before. Was I going crazy? I couldn't be. I, I had been feeling bugs in my bed for almost a year, and neither I nor my family had ever had any serious mental problems before. I, I went off to sleep on the couch that night, but something told me to not make any calls to my extermination companies. And it just kept getting worse from there. Every night I went to sleep, I would wake up with tens and no, hundreds of bugs covering my skin, and every night, when I turned on the light, there was there were no bugs to be seen. The dreams began to escalate as well. When I woke up in the hellish cavern, devoid of any natural light, I would not escape back to the real world so easily. It would often feel like I, I would be lying there, suffering in my ravaged and decaying body for hours, even days. I was no longer alone in the cavern either. Looking around at the rocky terrain covered in fire and insects, I saw the remains of several other unfortunate souls, all of which were almost completely eaten away. However, each of these bodies had an, an intact, perfect head. When I had my first incredibly long dream in the cavern, I sat against the rock wall that I woke up against for what must have been two days or more. Within that time, I had somehow almost gotten used to the insectant crawling over my body. And I grew restless. I wanted to do something, anything at all. And so I decided I would try to talk. When I tried to speak at first, I broke out in a coughing fit due to the extreme dryness in my throat. When I finally stopped coughing, I felt a change in the atmosphere in the cavern. The best way I can describe it is like when you let out a sneeze or a cough while sitting in a quiet auditorium. Nobody says anything about it, but you can almost feel their eyes on you, looking to see who disturbed the quiet of the place. Despite this feeling, I decided to call out to one of the bodies that was lying on the ground. Hey, Bonesy over there. Yeah, you. How's it going? It may have sounded like a super childish way to talk. But I was sure that I was the only living being in that place, and it felt silly to talk as if I was talking to a real person. All my fake joviality quickly turned into fear as I continued to look at the body. Its head incredibly slowly turned to face me. It was... It was at that moment when I realized these bodies, these things... were still alive. I would have screamed in terror, but I saw the look of true pain that resided behind those large, tear-filled green eyes. This skeleton, this... This woman had been down here for God knows how long, and all she could do was lie there in silence as bugs crawled all over what used to be her body. We gazed at each other for what felt like an eternity. And then... I awoke in my bed crying my eyes out and covered in hundreds of bugs that I could not see. I wish with all my heart that I could say that that was the end of it. That I had just had a long string of really bad nightmares. A very strange pest problem. But it wasn't the end. I had the same dream every night. And every night it's still... It feels like my stay in that place grows a few hours longer. 
I swear when I wake up I'm covered in thousands of bugs now, and every time I get out of bed they still vanish completely. Starting to deteriorate physically too, I stopped going to work a week ago and I can barely function. Despite the eternity I feel lying in that cavern every night, I only seem to get an hour or two of sleep. And all I see of my right foot now is a, is a mangled and bloody bone. I now know that I'm being drawn into this hell covered in bugs and bodies of the damned each night. Each night now is getting longer by the week and it's, it's only a matter of time before I join the other lonely abandoned bodies in the cave. I have to come to grips with the reality that the other mutilated people that I see every night are real people, just like me, eaten away by, by the bugs, left to rot while still cursed to live, with nothing they can do but cry. So I have one question to ask, before I'm lost to the bugs forever. Do you feel them crawling? Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give a big thank you to you for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's podcast episode, for uh, clicking on this Mr. Creepypasta story time. Before I wish you sweet dreams tonight, I just wanted to give a big thank you to Taisea Lynn, Gino Baga, Arneo, Eric Mary, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milestead, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Alyasin, Buddy Burroughs, Tyler Ramberg, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Melissa Swagart, Chumpinski, Daniel Rao, The Ginger Bros, Robert Ramirez, Andrew Stenberg, Holy Realm, Ralph Rodriguez, and Dr. Strawberry. These guys are the friggin' amazing people from Patreon who help me stay alive. If you guys would like to help support the show as well, you can always check me out at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and get your name either shown here at the end of the credits or in the description down below. And you can check out this podcast here on YouTube or here on Spotify or Apple iTunes podcast or Google Play podcast, whichever one you happen to go to. I mean, seriously, if you're on YouTube right now and you look down in the description, there's like a whole list of different playlists that you can be able to watch, like hours upon hours upon hours of content. If you want to get your horror story creepypasta fix, it's, it's all there as well as like a live stream. Oh, and also my wife sells Dungeons and Dragons themed tea. Etsy.com slash Ivory Monocle Tea. <laughs> Links are also down below. <laughs> Sweet dreams, everybody.